crew, my name is Polly Jean Harrison with the Finter Times and I'm here today with Gemma from Tech Passport. Gemma, how are you today? Good, thank you. Yeah, really good. Fantastic. Why don't you give us a little bit of an intro as to yourself and what you do? Okay, I'm Gemma. I'm the Chief Growth Officer over at Tech Passport and we connect financial institutions with fintechs, making the whole onboarding much faster, quicker and smoother. Fantastic. Well, I'd love to hear a little bit more about Tech Passport and obviously you mentioned about your onboarding, but what kind of things make you unique in the industry right now? I think what makes us unique is that we're solving an industry issue that nobody's ever managed to solve before, despite it being a problem throughout history in, the, in our industry. Um, so while everyone complains about the fact that onboarding is really time consuming, hard and not just hard, but hard to navigate and not quite, people don't quite understand what is needed from them when they're on the fintech side. What we've done is we've created a solution which puts fintechs into that driving seat so they know what is expected of them. And that way they can actually decide how to navigate that within their business plans ahead of time. And then it helps the banks and the financial institutions because we're educating those fintechs for them, so saving them time. Fantastic. And obviously, as the chief growth officer, how is your growth and expansion going? What what plans do you have in place currently? It's really good, and plans change all the time because we're constantly being given new opportunities, which is exciting. Um, it's nice to be in the startup in that respect, where you get to pivot where your growth plans go. Um, we went international straight away because one of our first client was stateside, which was exciting. Um, so we've always been an international firm, but now we're looking more into Europe and the Middle East and Asia and then into Australia as well, which is exciting. Fantastic. Yeah, so a lot going on. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I know today you are running the speed networking event here at Fintech We London. I'd love yeah. to hear a little bit more about that because it sounded so much fun. Yeah, no, it was really fun and the feedback has been fantastic. We've had a couple of people come up and say it was the best event that they've been to, which is, you know, top quality uh, information coming back. Um, so. Um, on the side I run Women of Fintech, which is a diversity and inclusion community. And we did a lot on neurodiversity during COVID. And we realized that actually a lot of events are set up for people that are expected to approach others and have that confidence to approach others. And then we also had feedback that there's a lot of um, badge surfing going on where people mm -hmm. are ignored because they've not got the right job title or you know, perhaps their fintech is unknown within the industry um, and so on. So we started doing speed networking because what we realized is we gave people that opportunity and that parameters in which to network without that awkwardness of having to go up to someone and introduce themselves in an unknown environment, in an unknown location and so on. And so by giving people those parameters of, right, you've got three minutes in which to introduce yourself and then move on, it was really inclusive. And so then I brought that to Tech Passport because actually what Tech Passport is doing is connecting those financial institutions and fintechs together. And you're realizing what we're doing on the platform into real life by giving that speed networking event, but also adding what I want to bring to everything that I ever do, whichever job role or job hat I've got on, which is that diversity and inclusion part. So it's been really exciting. And the feedback I've just got now has been, uh, yeah, fantastic. So I'm glad everybody's enjoyed it in the same way that I'd hope they would. Yeah, and I guess it's it's nice to take the pressure off it almost, I think, yeah. in the, with the, <laughs> Because you meet so many people at these events and the fact that you get to sit down, have a quick chat and then move on. Yeah, and there's no pressure because it's three minutes, it's yeah. done. <laughs> and then you move on. It's yeah. Oh, amazing. It sounded like great fun. I was so, I was so sad. To we even it. had a couple of people turn up that hadn't booked just because they heard the fun going on. Yeah. And they followed the laughter down the yeah. corridor and turned up, which <laughs> I thought was amazing. <laughs> oh, amazing. So, I mean, obviously there you mentioned uh, Women in Fintech. That you also, I'd love to talk a little bit about that and how... That's going for you at the moment. What What's happening in that space right now for you? Yeah, so uh, Women of Fintech, uh, I'm one of those people that can't sit still. So despite having a full-time job and a uh, million kids, <laughs> when I was pregnant with my fourth, I realised that in my 21 years of being in this industry, banking had gone up exponentially. You could pay you know, on your sunglasses, your ring and so on. But being a woman coming back from maternity leave had kind of stayed fairly stagnant mm -hmm. and it was hard to navigate that. Um, so at the time, I was really into something called Humans of New York, mm -hmm. which is a photographer that goes, you yes, know, yeah, I know, yeah. Okay, cause can I also like know? Dogs, of, uh, dogs of New York oh, as perfect. well. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with dogs. Yeah. So it's a photographer that goes around New York, takes a picture and tells a story. 
And so during my maternity leave, I set it up. I set up Women of Fintech and Humans of Fintech. And I just took photos and told stories of people within the industry. Uh, Women of Fintech grew to over 2,000 during my maternity leave, whereas Humans of Fintech grew to 72. So people do quite often say, why women? You know, like it, it grew of its own accord. It was organic. Mm -hmm. um, and it was that people just wanted to tell their story and people wanted to listen to other women's stories within mm -hmm. the industry. And they wanted to support each other. So we're the only community that is non-commercial. There's no commercial benefit behind us. It's just a full community of people wanting to promote D&I and working together. So by everybody giving a little bit towards it. So I can't take you know credit for all of it in any means it's everybody putting a little bit in and together we've created something fantastic we've got over 4,000 members and an audience of over 14,000 now uh, we're doing the second fintech pride next week which two years in a row we've run which is fantastic and um, we've branched into lots of different diversities as I said earlier we did some bits on neurodiversity as well and we try and follow the calendar that's already out there mm -hmm. in terms of what's out there of like pride month obviously we did fintech pride last month we did um, autism awareness for autism month and so on so we try and break it into the cycles that are out there already yeah it's amazing it's absolutely and it's so important as well and i guess why is it important for you particularly to share these stories and really get that promotion out there of of differing voices i guess within the industry yeah i mean there's lots of reasons why for me it's been important obviously being a woman with four kids i found difficulty myself in the forefront um, but also having children that have got lots of differences themselves I can see that actually I'm doing this for their future which is always a good driver um, but also I think you know I've been to way too many events where either I'm the only person like me in the audience or beyond that people are there are people like me in the audience and people are like me are on the stage and they're talking about it and everyone goes home angry but there's no hook on the end as to mm. what we should do together and you think you've got all of these people together saying there needs to be a change unless you do an action point at the end mm. there is no change so women of fintech was set up to always have a hook on the end so for example over covid we got banks and fintechs to donate their old laptops and computers to children for a social mobility point of view so that they could access their learning during covid um, we had people teaching coding to children all around the world over, over COVID as well, which was fantastic. We had some amazing people from Finastra teach coding. They were based in Canada and the children were literally based all over the world. Wow. And it was such a beautiful thing to see that actually mm. if everybody puts in a little amount, we do actually make that difference. Those ripple effects do affect way more people than you imagine. And it's been, yeah, just really nice to see. And it's nice to in an industry where things are so fast paced and so money oriented because it's finance at the end of the day it's nice to have that human element on the back of it as well and think actually i'm making a change i'm making a difference for the future yeah absolutely yeah well thank you so much for joining me today it's been a pleasure to chat likewise thank you i've been wanting to meet you for ages as i said at the beginning so <laughs> awesome <laughs>